At some point in our lives, many of us have fantasized about being someone else, but few have taken it to the extreme, like Frank William Abagnale. Before turning 21, he successfully impersonated as an airline pilot, a professor at a university, a doctor, and an assistant district attorney. He traveled for free around 26 countries for two years and cashed out more than $2.5 million in forged checks. He was caught ultimately and served five years in prison. His astonishing skills left an impression on the FBI that they made an unprecedented move, hiring him to track down the fraudsters like him. This is the story of Frank William Abagnell Jr., the greatest pretender the world has ever seen. Frank Abagnell was born on April 27, 1948, in Bronxville, New York. His father, Frank Sr., was in the army. After the war, Frank Sr. started his own business. Frank had a stable childhood and was especially close to his father, who became deeply involved in Republican local politics. Frank's life was turned upside down when his mother decided to leave his father. After the divorce, Frank decided to live with his father. His father often tagged Frank along on business dealings, where he learned about the business basics. Frank's first con victim was his father. When Frank was 15, his father gave him a gasoline credit card and a truck. Instead of using the car to buy gas as intended, Abagnale convinced gas station attendants and used it to buy tires, batteries, and other products at gas stations, and then sold the products to people for cash. The scam fell apart when his father got the credit card bill of $3,400. Frank didn't know that his father was struggling financially. Destroyed by his parents' tensions and his father's newfound financial circumstances, Frank left home at the age of 16. As soon as Frank arrived in New York, he opened a checking account and received blank checks. It was more difficult to earn a decent living than Frank initially thought, especially without a high school diploma. Frank had an idea that would increase his wage. He decided to exaggerate his education and altered his birth date by adding another 10 years to his age on his driver's license. His tactic was believable because he was mature for his age and six foot tall with prematurely graying hair. However, he quickly realized that even if he lied about his age and education, the jobs available would pay only enough to provide for the bare minimum in comfort. Frank decided to quit his job and write bad checks in order to support himself. Before long, by changing the routing numbers on the checks, he had written hundreds of bad checks and had overdrawn on his checking account by thousands of dollars. Frank knew that the police would eventually catch up with him if he stayed in one place, so he decided it was best to move away and change his name. While he was thinking about where to go next, he saw several airline pilots and stewardesses having a good time outside of the Commodore Hotel in New York. He got a brilliant idea to change his identity. Frank thought he would have more success chasing checks if he could get his hands on a pilot's uniform, because pilots were typically more credible and respectable professionals, and bank tellers would less likely be suspicious of him swindling money while cashing his bad checks. He contacted a purchasing agent at Pan American Airlines' corporate headquarters and told them that he was a pilot for the company and that the hotel he was staying at in New York lost his uniform. He was instructed by the agent to visit a company specializing in Pan Am uniforms on Fifth Avenue. He went to the company and that very day, Frank was fitted with a Pan Am co-pilot's uniform, which was charged to a fictionalized employee number he invented while filling out the paperwork. Frank walked out of the building with his uniform in hand. However, to make his new persona more believable, he realized he needed a Pan Am pass card. After looking in the yellow pages and making several phone calls, Frank learned that the 3M company was responsible for making passes and IDs for several airline companies, including Pan Am. Frank contacted the company, pretending to be a purchasing officer interested in buying new ID cards for his company. Then he set up an interview. During the meeting with the sales representative, Frank was shown catalogs of the IDs they offered. He noticed in a catalog that there was a sample ID similar used by Pan Am. He told the salesman that he wants a completely finished copy of the pass with his picture and name so that his colleagues could see the end results. The salesman made him a sample pass with his name and picture on it. The card was almost an exact replica of the Pan Am pass, but without the logo. He then placed the logo taken from a model airplane model. After getting the pass, 
he decided to obtain as much information as possible about aviation. He arranged several interviews with executives at Pan Am's headquarters, posing as a student doing a research project on the company and pilots. He gained a wealth of relevant information, including knowledge of company policies and regulations about co-pilots, the types of planes used, and the international hubs where the airline flew. Most importantly, Frank learned about deadheading. Deadheading was an airline employee privilege that allowed a worker to fly to far-off destinations on other airlines to fulfill specific job requirements elsewhere. Eventually, Frank felt confident enough to attempt deadheading on a flight to Miami. After several deadheading flights and cashing fake checks, he decided to lay low for a while and decided to take refuge in Georgia. Frank posed as an out-of-town doctor in Georgia on his leasing application. A few days later, a doctor in the neighborhood paid him a visit. He invited Frank to visit the hospital where he worked. After several visits to the hospital, the administrator offered him a temporary position of supervising medical interns during night shifts. Frank created a fake credentials and started supervising the interns. Despite lacking medical knowledge, Frank used humor and relied on other resident doctors to maintain his position without performing medical procedures. However, after a moment of realization that he could have endangered a child's life, Frank decided to leave the hospital, understanding the seriousness of his actions. He resigned shortly thereafter, having worked at the hospital for a little less than a year. Frank's next destination was Louisiana, where once again his life took another unexpected turn. In Louisiana, Frank reunited with the stewardess he had met before and started dating her. He led her to believe his false claims of being an airline co-pilot and a Harvard Law degree. At a party, Frank's girlfriend introduced him to a lawyer who worked for the state's district attorney. Impressed by his credentials, the lawyer suggested that Frank should apply for a position at the attorney general's office by submitting his university transcripts and taking the Louisiana bar exam. Frank forged transcripts from Harvard Law School and attempted the bar exam multiple times until he finally passed and received a license to practice law. Frank was hired as a legal assistant in the corporate law division. A real Harvard graduate lawyer on staff grew suspicious, leading him to leave his job as a lawyer and pursue a different career path. Frank then decided to go to Utah and pose as a professor at Brigham Young University. Despite lacking teaching experience, Frank met with the dean and was immediately hired to teach two summer courses. Leaving Utah, Frank continued his fraudulent activities and even orchestrated a successful check printing scheme with the help of his girlfriend's father's printing press, but the police eventually tracked him down after an ex-girlfriend recognized him on a wanted poster. Frank was caught and sentenced to one year in prison in France. Following extradition to Sweden and the United States, Frank received a 12-year sentence but was granted early parole after serving five years. He then utilized his expertise in fraud to help law enforcement and became a renowned authority on document fraud. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us for more exciting content.